Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the class. How are you doing today? Okay. Fine, Miss. Excellent. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. So I think everyone thought it, be, it because it was Teacher's Day, we were not having classes, but we are. And here I am. So everyone should be here. It's 8 or 5 already. So obviously I'm going to start with the attendance because it's time to go with the attendance. Maybe your classmates are going to join, I don't know, later. Let's go. Wait a minute. <clears throat> Ana Verónica Hernández Rodríguez. Franca Isabel Tunaca de Rodríguez. Carlos Alberto Meléndez Rosales. Present. Clelia Estela Flores Hernández. Eric Enrique Reyes Martínez. Eric Giovanni Jiménez Canizales. Eric Josué Reyes Molina. Henry Adonay Torres Gómez. Jacobo de Jesús Gómez Gómez. Present. Jenis Carolina Vázquez de Medrano. Present. Johnny Alexander Escobar Calderón. Vamos a dar chance. Ahí está. Johnny Alexander Escobar Calderón. Present. Jonathan José Oliva Enríquez. José Alfredo Hueso López. Present. Yo sería Angelina Ramírez Melgar. Julio César Aguillón Arevalo. Present. María Julia Ramos Olívar. Mayra Patricia Artiga Vázquez. Oscar René Molina Calidonio. Present. Oseas Figueroa Cisneros. Present. Rafael Antonio Hernández Castillo. <coughs> Rafael Antonio Martínez Navarrete. Present, Miss. Ramiro Rafael Aguilar Díaz. Sandra Yanira Gómez Romero. Silvia Patricia Aceituno Méndez. Wow, qué inasistencia la de hoy, ¿verdad? Verónica Elizabeth Burgos Rivas. Mm -hmm. Amado Javier Urrutia Rivera. En Jacqueline Lisset García Miranda. Ok. Hoy sí me les ha pasado. I don't know what is happening today. A lot of, a lot of students. Reyes. Quizás es la lluvia. Sí, bueno. ha llovido bastante. Y en mi casa hace no, tres horas y a Santaradas. Horrible. No, no es mejor. Bueno, me está horrible. No, es raro que llueva. Déjenme ver. Los, los pasos de desnivel topados de agua. A mí me costó pasar ahí por Venezuela. Por eso doy gracias de no vivir en San Salvador. <ríe> I don't like y Salvador. sigue lloviendo. I don't like San Salvador. Me gusta San Salvador como para ir a visitar, a comprar, pero para vivir, no, thank you. No, thank you. No, I prefer here. Aquí no tengo tráfico, ni inundaciones, no existe. Aquí lo que pasa es que se caen árboles. <ríe> That's what happens here. <ríe> Me quedo sin luz o sin internet, ¿verdad? Sí. Eso fue lo que pasó los dos días que di clases en otra casa. El Monday and Tuesday. Estuve dando clases en otros lugares. So, yeah. That's the only thing that happens, but I don't know. Es por el tipo de tormentas. Como allá en las zonas más planas, eh, tomo más velocidad de viento. Por eso aguantan muchos árboles. Es porque hay más árboles también. No, tal vez no hay más árboles, sino que lo, las velocidades de viento, las tormentas son más aceleradas. Donde yo vivo, sí, hay muchos, sí, hemos, muchísimos más árboles uh -huh. en, en, en San Salvador. Igual, donde vivo, donde vivo en San Miguel, yo, hay árboles. Pero no. No, tampoco es montaña, pero de repente se queda sin energía porque se caen, botan yeah. los postes, cables. Yeah, correct, correct. Pero prefiero eso. I'd rather that. 
que he visto Pero aquí sí en video una ahorita. va el carrito, ¿verdad? Ahí como que es flotador va el carrito en el pan carrito es así en el agua y no, no, thank you, no, no. No me imagino perder ese dinerito. Ah, uh -uh, thank you. So, well, vamos a ver si se conectan más. At least we have 15 students here. We're going to wait for them, but we're going to start with the class because we have to start with the class, right? So, we're going to go here. I have two messages. Oh, Henry. Okay, welcome to the class. Henry, appreciate it. I have, me están escribiendo algunos. Some students are sending messages today. Let me, let me hear. Bueno, varios dicen de que no hay datos, están en el trabajo. Well, 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 we'll see, we'll see. Okay, so um, let's start with today's class. In these classes, we have been practicing the comparatives and superlatives. And the thing is, I kind of think you got, you get the idea that we're talking about comparatives and superlatives. But when we have to make sentences, okay, eh, it's like a little difficult for you to organize the sentence in the correct form, like subject, like the subject, the comparative, to add ES, to add D, to add more than. So I think we have a little bit of problems with those parts. So I'm gonna go ahead to the last, very, very, very last review of this topic, because I need you to understand that what we're doing is to use the formula to write things in the correct form, okay? To write the sentences following the correct form. Okay, well, let's go. We're gonna, Helen is 28 and she weights 85 kilograms. Uh, Mario, well, 65, let's put it here. Mario is 21 and he weights 80 kilograms. Pedro, it's 24 and he weights 90 kilograms. Let's add the height. The height is going to be, well, in English, they use feet instead of meters, but we're going to do meters, okay? 160 meters. Mario is 180 meters. And Pedro is Let's see. Okay, like that. So based on this that we have here, we have different information about different people. So these are the years, this is the weight, and this is the height. The weight, the height, right? So we're gonna identify with these sentences three things. Well, a lot of things. Who's the youngest? Who's the oldest? Who's the shortest? Who's the tallest? Who's the lightest? And who's the heaviest? Okay, like that, who's the heaviest? Now, we have one, two, three, six questions based on this information that we have up here. So we're gonna answer that information. 
the youngest. Look at the information and tell me, who is the youngest person of them three? Mario is the youngest. Mario. So we're gonna yeah. answer, thank you very much. Mario is the youngest, right? Mario is the youngest. Who is the oldest? Helen. Helen is the oldest. oldest. Helen is the oldest. Now, this is to talk about superlatives because we have one, two, three people. But let's imagine we didn't have Pedro. We only have Helen and Mario. In this case, I can do it differently. Instead of saying who's the oldest or who's the youngest in them, of them, I can do a comparison. So if I want to talk about age and I want to say Helen has more is more years old than Mario, so I'm going to say Helen is about the years, the years. Helen is? Oldest. Oldest. Older. Because in this Older. case, we Older. are using comparative adjective. We're going to ah. talk about two people, Helen and Mario. So we're going to say Helen is older than Mario. You see? So in this case, I can do a comparison between two people. What you need to understand is when I'm talking about two people and that form, I can use a comparative, right? And this is a comparative. Comparative. But in this case, I'm using a superlative because I'm talking about three people. I'm identifying the person who's the most on something of them three, right? Let's go with the last, next one. Uh, let's talk about Pedro and Mario. But in this case, we're going to talk about the weight, the weight. So I'm going to say Mario is, so the correct form will be light, light, right? So light. But because I'm making a comparison, I'm going to say Mario is lighter, lighter than Pedro. Than Pedro. Than Pedro. Okay. So it's very important you pay attention to this. Two people, comparative. Three people, and I need to identify one of them most. I'm going to use superlative. I can use superlative with two people and say between Mario and Helen, um, Helen is the lightest, right? I can say that. But we are doing this so you can identify different ways of saying this, like using comparatives and using superlatives. So what are we going to do right now? We're going to do an activity, of course, because I need you to do. Oh, oh wait, wait, wait. Si quieren tomar un screenshot, if you want to take a screenshot and send, it, send this to the WhatsApp group. That'll be perfect before I erase it. Okay. Let's erase it now. Okay. So this is the information that we're going to be using. Right? This is the information that we need. Got it? Wait a minute. This is the information. Okay. Now, these questions you're going to answer. And then you are going to make comparatives with this other information that I'm going to give you here. Comparatives. Okay. In the comparatives, I'm going to give you the names of the people you're gonna make comparative sentences about. For example, you're gonna talk about Helen and Mario. 
height. Do you know what is height? Peso. The weight is peso. Medida. Oh, height. 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 Yes, it's like the yeah, 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 yeah. Altura, <clears throat> right? Height is the altura, right? Height. We're gonna talk about Mario and Pedro. H. We're gonna talk about Helen and Pedro. Oops, sorry. Helen and Pedro, wait. Do you know what is weight? Peso. 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 Exactly. We're going to talk about their weight. Then we're going to talk about Mario and Helen H. Okay, because Mario is younger than Helen. Helen, Mario is younger than Pedro. In this case, we're going to do it the other way. We're going to talk about Pedro first and then about Mario. Pedro and Mario H. Okay. Okay, so what are we going to do? Based on this information you have here, we're going to do these four sentences, okay? And then you're going to answer these questions. But you have to write sentences, okay? For example, si aquí tuviera, let's say, una que no tengamos ahí. We're going to talk about Pedro and... <clears throat> Helen... Height. Let's talk about Pedro and Helen height. So the sentence will be like this. Pedro, this is the height. Okay. So Pedro, and let's see, Pedro is 185. And Helen, what did I do? And Helen is 160. So in this case, Pedro is... Pedro is... Is taller. Taller than Helen. You see? This is the example. That's something that we're going to identify here. Between Helen and Mario, we're going to talk about the height. I'm going to write you the names so you don't mess it out. H is this. Then this is weight. And then this is height. <clears throat> Okay, so you don't get confused. This is the weight. This is the height. And this is the age, okay? Now let's talk about another one that we don't have there. I'm gonna give you more examples. Uh, we're making Helen and Pedro, Pedro and Mario H. Pedro and Mario H. Let's talk about Pedro and Mario Mario and Pedro's height. Mario and Pedro's height. Mario and Pedro, and we're gonna talk about the height, okay? So let's see, the first one we're talking about is Mario, right? Mario is, and then look, Mario, it's 180. And Pedro is 185, so Mario is, Shorter than shorter than Pedro. Pedro. See? Okay. Yeah. You're getting it? Yes. Well. Anyways, that's the activity we're gonna do. So you're gonna identify the first person, then is, then let's see here, is taller, shorter, then 
and then you're gonna say that. Then you're gonna answer these questions. Do you understand the activity we're doing in this moment? Yes, miss. Okay, Oseas understands the activity. What about the other ones? Yes, yes, miss. yes miss. Okay. I felt like you were a little bit quiet today. I was like, hmm, that's weird. Okay, let's see. <clears throat> Ana Veronica, are you participating? In the working, miss. You're working? Sí. Okay. Yes. okay. <laughs> it's okay. So, okay. Ana and Jocelyn are working. Henry, are you participating? Yes, miss. Okay, okay. Because yes, uh, uh, miss, I'm here too. Okay. You're participating, Veronica? Yes, yes. Okay, perfect, yes. perfect. That's good, that's good. Because I don't want to send people who are not participating to the same group. That's what yes. I'm yes. Okay. Let's go. Excuse me, Miss. Ramiro. Excuse me, es que estoy en mi teléfono y me saca cada rato de la reunión. Me ha costado conectarme. El internet de nuevo, Ramiro. Sí, es que desde ayer y ahora con la tormenta está peor. Por eso estoy desde el teléfono. Es ok. Y, pero con, lo había mandado a trabajar en alguna sala. Sí, en la sala 2 estaba y me, me sacó. Ahí intentemos, pero apague la cámara, Ramiro, porque yo creo que así lo funciona. Eh, gracias. Ok, there we go.
Javier, ¿está oyente hoy? Hello. Hello. Es que ahorita acabo de llegar. Pero sí va a estar participando en la clase. Sí, sí. Ah, ok. Sus compañeros. Como en el están teléfono haciendo... estaba así. Ah, ok. Este, eh, pero ya estaba en una sala. No, no, ahorita voy en el con el... Ok. Están unos sus compañeros en las salas haciendo oraciones con respecto a esto, ¿ok? Ok. There you go. Ramiro, the same happened to you again? Hi. Hi, Ramiro. Yes, miss, it's, you can hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Hey, thank you. Excuse me. The same happened to you again? Yes, please. Okay, number two, right? Yes, please, thank you. All right. Sí, así es. Waiter, ¿por qué me la haces por dije? No, Waiter, creo que la estoy escribiendo mal. Veamos cómo lo escribió la misa arriba. No, oh, está bien. ¿Sabe por qué me la pone como mal? Explícame. Waiter. Diccionario. No, sí, mira, está bien. Sí, ves aquí abajo, es inglés de Estados Unidos, el de Centro. Sí, Waiter, waiter, what are you doing, waiter? Waiter, hider. Oh my God, why are you saying tire? Altura, es, mal, es más altura que Pedro. Mario es más altura que Pedro. Mario es más altura que Helen. Pedro es más peso que... Ya vieron que estaba mala. Ajá. En la número, en la número uno, Pedro... Ay, bueno, anda bien. Algo no anda bien, algo no me cuadra a mí. Les está preguntando Ajá. quién es el, por ejemplo, el number. ¿Cuál están haciendo? La primera, eh, Helen en Mario. Sí, la primera. Ajá, la primera llega hasta la cuatro. No, pero espérenme, espérenme, espérenme. Borren todo eso, por favor. Lo primero que tienen que hacer es la comparación entre Helen y Mario. Vaya, mire, váyanse arriba al cuadro, váyanse arriba al cuadro. Helen y Mario, ¿ok? No, bajo, bajo, bajo. Okay. Al cuadro, al cuadro, al cuadro. Okay. Helen y Mario, altura. Okay. Una comparación de entre Helen y Mario su altura. La principal es Helen. Y Helen, 
¿Es más pequeña o más alta que Mario? Más pequeña. Más pequeña. Entonces yo voy a decir Helen is Not. shorter. Short es pequeño. Voy a buscar cómo se dice pequeño. So, Helen is shorter than Mario. Mario. Luego me voy a ubicar en padre. Espérenme, 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 espérenme. Les estoy explicando qué van a hacer. Les voy a estar explicando qué van a hacer. Please. Vamos para arriba. Luego van a hacer la comparación entre Pedro y Mario de edad. Luego entre Helen y Pedro de peso. No es, no van a poner age ni waiter. ¿verdad? Van a buscar en edad older, younger. Taller, shorter. Alto, bajo, ¿verdad? Luego van Mario en Helen en cuanto a edad. Luego en las preguntas de abajo van a poner ¿Quién es el más joven de todos ellos? Who's the youngest? Y vamos a poner Mario is the youngest. ¿Ok? Lo único que van a hacer son cuatro oracioncitas comparativas que son las que les he pedido yo ahí arriba y responder las preguntas que están allá abajo. Ah, ya entendí, no te dije. Ajá, ¿verdad? No, okay, yo les digo allá, ¿ya me entendieron? Sí, me dicen. No, es que Rafa no contestó, pero me, me confundió a mí, sí. Uh -huh. Oye, te dije, había que responder las preguntas y hacer las cuatro comparativas, te dije. Hoy, hoy sí estamos en las otras cuatro, mire, mire que eran relajos que estábamos haciendo. Taller than Helen. Pedro is older than Mario. Pedro is heavier than Helen. Helen is older than Mario. En superlatives, Mario is the youngest. Helen is the oldest. Helen, Helen is the shortest. Pedro is the tallest. Helen is the lightest. Y Pedro is the heaviest. Wow, you're doing a really, really good job. Excellent. Um, well, if you can keep practicing, o si pueden seguir haciendo oraciones comparativas, incluso de las que no les he pedido, porque sus otros classmates han tenido un pequeñito retraso, así que... <laughs> un pequeño. Ok. No problem, miss. No Thank problem, you. miss. Appreciate it. Ok, veamos las cuatro oraciones. Eh, Helen en Mario Hyde. ¿Dónde está esa oración? Helen en Mario Hyde. Helen en Mario Hyde. Helen en Mario. Helen en Mario. Me han hecho varias oraciones, pero no las que pedí yo. <ríe> las que están arriba. Helen en Mario. Helen Hyde. Ahí está. Helen is, Helen is shorter than Mario. Ok. Oh my God, you guys, ustedes han hecho un montón de oraciones. Bueno, si ¿sí pueden practicar pronunciation para mientras, porque he tenido un problemita con otra sala, ¿ok? Que todavía okay. está. Okay. ok, gracias. Okay. Thank you, appreciate it. Thank you very much.
Okay. So, that was not difficult because I know it wasn't difficult. It was not difficult. So, we need to, I just need to explain something to you really quick, okay? When we talk about weight, we can use two adjectives that can be heavy, in this case, to do the comparative, heavy, or we can say light, right? Light, heavy and light. And heavy means pesado and light means liviano. Nos hablamos aquí de más gordo, más delgado. We don't talk about that porque no sabemos la altura, relación de peso, that we don't know. We're talking about who's heaviest and who's lightest. Okay? Now, the two adjectives we're going to use to talk about the, he the height are going to be tall and short. Short. Right? So we can talk about the tallest, the shorter, taller than, short, shorter than. And then we have the age. To talk about age, we are going to have two adjectives in this case. We're going to have young and old, right? So in the uh, sentences we have there, we were making comparisons, right? Or with comparatives, okay? Let me see. Hmm. So we were talking about Helen and Mario Height. We're gonna say Helen is Mario. So if I say this, I'm saying mas altura, right? But I don't want to say that. I'm going to talk about if she, Helen is shorter or taller than Mario. If I see the, the chart, I will see that Helen is shorter than Mario, right? So that's the activity we were doing. That's all we were doing. Now, I'm going to ask you to tell me the answers. So Helen and Mario, obviously, I did that one. Pedro and Mario H. Please, Henry, tell me. Uh, Mario is younger than Pedro. Is the opposite? Pedro is older than Mario. Excellent. Excellent, Henry. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, let's go with the next one that is Helen and Pedro. Wait. O sea. Sorry, Miss, can you repeat it again? Helen and Pedro, wait. Okay. That will be the Helen same. is the lightest, Pedro is the heaviest. No, but the comparative. Oh. Pedro is heavier than Helen. Pedro is heavier than Helen. And the opposite? Helen? Helen is lighter, lighter than Pedro. Lighter than Pedro. Excellent. Thank you, Seth. Very good. Okay. Uh, Jenny, can you help me with Mario and Helen? H? H. Uh, Mario? Mario and Helen. Is? Yeah, Mario and Helen H, the last one. Mario, Mario and Helen H. Mario is young. Mario is? The Helen is young, youngest, the Helen. Youngest than Helen, el más joven de Helen. Or okay. youngest or younger? Younger. Younger. Con R al final. Younger. That Helen. Mario is younger than Helen. Okay. Thank you very much, Janice. Remember that we have to identify comparatives versus superlatives. Let's see. Carlos Alberto. Who's the youngest? Carlos? 
who's the youngest? Mario, Mario is youngest. Young. Mario is the youngest. Mario is the youngest. The youngest. Don't forget that the. With superlatives, we use the. Veronica Burgos, who is the oldest? Oh. The old Helen is the oldest. Helen, Helen is the oldest. Thank you. Uh, Johnny, who is the shortest? Hello, Miss. Helen is the shortest. Helen is the shortest. Okay. Oscar Rene, who is the tallest? Pedro is taller. What? Pedro. But Pedro, is Pedro is the, the. Pedro is the tallest. Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, Julio, who is the lightest? Julio, who is the lightest? Yeah, but tell me the answer. Helen is the lightest. Helen is the lightest. Thank you. Um, Rafael Martinez, who is the heaviest? Pedro is the heaviest. Pedro is the heaviest. Excellent. Thank you very much. That was all we needed to do. Okay. So that's the end for comparatives and superlatives. And now we're going to go with a different topic that is modal. Perfect models. But before we start with that in the conversation, we're going to answer this question. So we have two questions right here. I'm going to read the two questions for you. And then we're going to discuss these questions in a conversational activity, pronunciation practice. How are employees monitored at your company? How are employees monitored at your company? That is the first question. The second question says, what kind of document documentation, documentation, what kind of documentation is used in your company to make sure employees are doing a good job? Again, what kind of documentation is used in your company to make sure employees are doing a good job? Let's go with the first one. I'm gonna give you my answers as an example. How are employees monitored at your company? Well, if you can see here, well, in the school, I am monitored by the principal. He goes to my classroom and he watches my classes. He observes my classes. And here at Inglés Corporativo, if you can see, I don't know if you have seen that a person connects to the class. Have you ever seen that it appears in Glass Corporativo and then it, it's a person there watching my class? Yes. So in all my classes, I am monitored by a person who monitors my class, a monitor. And besides that, all my classes are uploaded on YouTube, right? YouTube, you can, you can watch my classes on YouTube. So anyone who wants to monitor my class can monitor my class at any time, anytime, right? In these classes, I feel really observed. <laughs> so everything I do, everything I said, there's a record. No hay forma equivocarse. <laughs> and then the next one says, what kind of documentation is used in your company to make sure employees are doing a good job? So in my company, there's like a checklist or you can use as well, a, I don't know how to say this in Spanish or in English. Rubric, rubric, rubric. You can have a rubric. Have you ever seen one of those? Nunca visto una rubrica? No, mis. Yes. Yes, no. Una okay. no, firma corta. What is it, Oscar? Es una firma corta. No. Rubrica. No. 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 
la rúbrica. Ajá. Uh -huh. What Hay is dos formas de entenderlo. Ajá. Uh -huh. Una es uh, uh, la, la única letra de su firma, así lo hacemos nosotros como abogados, quedamos registrados oh, con okay. esa rúbrica. Y la otra es uh, rubricar un documento que sea idéntico al original. Oh. Y, uh -huh. Ok, vaya. En educación, en educación, uh -huh. una rúbrica es un documento donde yo pongo, por ejemplo, eh, una actividad que diga, eh, tiene aquí en un cuadro de acá están todas las actividades y en el otro cuadro de acá está la evaluación de todas esas actividades. Por ejemplo, dice una, un cuadro, eh, habla en inglés, por ejemplo, fuera la, el punto de evaluación. Y entonces están los demás cuadritos a la par que dice. Primero hay uno que ya está prehecho, que dice todo. Eh, hubo, habla 50% inglés, 50% español. El segundo diría, habla inglés eh, más que español. Y el último sería, su clase es completamente en inglés. ¿Entienden? Entonces, esa es la evaluación. So, rubrics. So, I have six points. Si cada uno de esos los gano, si caigo en el último, seis puntos. Si caigo en el de en medio, cuatro puntos. Y si caigo en el primero, dos puntos. You got it? Yes. So, y para abajo hay un montón más de aspectos con sus evaluaciones y al final solo se pone el valor, el, el valor sumativo de esa evaluación. Yep. So, Esto yo lo conocía como una matriz más o menos. Pero rúbrica. Rubric. Rubric. Es, es, es casi lo que yo le decía, lo que dice la abogada. Que es una firma corta y está la otra que es la original de su documento de identidad, que es la... la Grande, se puede decir. Dale, voy a enseñar un ejemplo de una rúbrica para que vean. Por ejemplo, yo cuando firmo revisiones o son cosas bien, son demasiados papeles, la rúbrica pongo, no pongo lo, mi firma del DUI, por ejemplo. Correcto. Pero miren, aquí sabe. Este es un ejemplo de rúbrica, ¿ven? Responsabilidad. ¿Es responsable con la parte del trabajo asignado? Sí, ha realizado todo, pero ha hecho casi todo lo que se le debe de hacer. Ha hecho mucho. Eh, menos de lo que tenía que hacer, no ha hecho nada. Entonces, mire, aquí hay unidades valorativas. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Entonces, si cae en esto, mi rúbrica, yo tendría cuatro puntos en el primer punto. Si caigo en el primero, tendría solo un punto. Entonces, esta es una rúbrica. En, dentro de educación, esto es una rúbrica. ¿You got it? Oh, yo, yo la conocía como una matriz. Pero mire aquí cómo se llama. Ajá. Uh -huh. Rubrica. Ah, pero es rúbrica, no es rúbrica, con, con B. ¿Qué? Yo la conocía como rúbrica, con L, rúbrica. Rúbrica, con B, rúbrica. Rúbrica para evaluar el trabajo diario. Correcto, Ajá. yes. So that's what I'm telling you. Well, out of the point, ya conocimos rúbrica en educación, but out of the point, out of the topic, but this is what it is. So my evaluations in my workplace are mostly with checklists and rubrics, okay? So those are my evaluations. Now I want to know what are the evaluations in your workplaces, right? So we're gonna do, uh, let me share the question with you again. So we're gonna go and talk with our classmates. You know that this is what we're doing now. We're doing conversational practice, we're doing pronunciation practice, and you have to be able to communicate and understand ideas. So the first question is, how are employees monitored at your company? You're gonna tell me how you are monitoring your company. And the next one, it says, what kind of documentation, in my case, checklists and rubrics, is used in your company to make sure employees are doing a good job? Do you understand the activity we're doing in this moment? Yes, miss. Yes, Perfect. Miss. Thank you very much. What to do a rubrica, miss? No, 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 no. <ríe> Yo les estaba contando un ejemplo de cómo me evalúan a mí. Usted me va a preguntar, ah, sí. contar cómo le evalúan a usted en su trabajo. Uh, ok. If you are ever evaluated. Because I am. Yes, I have to evaluate. Ok, or, or how do you evaluate your employees? Yes. Ok. Ok. So we're going to go and do that activity. Pretty much that's what we're doing. Wait a moment. Ok, there we go.
uh, yeah. with activities for the person. Yeah. And, and only check uh, the, the goals of the person. Yeah. Okay, Jose, how are employees monitored at your company? Uh, in my case, uh, uh, there is uh, a list of rules. Okay, uh, that uh, is going to complete uh, that most questions. That, that you have to do, you have to do. Uh, you have to do, thank you. You have to do. Our, um, on into our um, exit uh, of work, um, monitoring is application for for in use uh, for 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 cada for cada big company. We are growing out. Aún. Estamos creciendo aún. Ah, ok. Somos, son cinco empleados y yo. Ah, ok. Sí, es complicado.
Okay. We did that activity. Now let's go with the next one. We have a conversation where you will see how to use models. Present perfect models. Do you remember the topic present perfect? Do you remember the topic or not? Nope. Present perfect. Nope. I have been to your house. I have visited San Salvador. I have traveled on a plane. I have played soccer. Remember present perfect? Yeah, yes. yeah. Thank you. Okay, that's better. Now, yeah, when you add, no, 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 no. When you use have or has and the present perfect is when you use the participle of the verb. So, for example, you have, um, let me see. So, I mean, see is bad, right? The past is so, and the past oh, participle okay. is seen. So, mm. it's when you use the third form, the past participle. And you talk about experiences, right? Experiences that you have had. That's what we're going to look today. But in this case, we're going to look at it with modal verbs. Okay. Here we have a conversation. And if you pay attention to the words in bold, the words that are in bold letter, um, they are with the present perfect, but they also have the modal verbs, right? So we're going to use these, and then I'm going to explain to you how to use them, okay? I'm going to read the conversation first for pronunciation, then for intonation. You can always ask me to repeat a speci in a specific pronunciation, or I can tell you the meaning of some words. Where is Mario? He is late for his shift. Mario? Goodness, I got a call that he is very sick. I should have told you earlier. Don't worry. He should, he should have called me directly. If he had called to my phone, I could have found a substitute by now. I have time this afternoon. Let me cover for him. Do you need me to repeat the pronunciation or to tell you the meaning of a word? That's enough? Okay, I'm gonna read it one more time. Where's Mario? He is late for his shift. What is shift? You didn't ask me, so now I ask you. What is shift? Turno. Excellent, says. Mario, goodness. Good is like, it's like, oh my God, right? I got a call that he is very sick. I should have told you earlier. Look, a comparative. Más temprano. Earlier, right? Don't worry. He should have called me directly. If he had called to my phone, I could have found a substitute by now. Substitute by like Substitute. I have time this afternoon. <laughs> Jocelyn? Jocelyn, creo que se abrió su micrófono. Oh, bueno, creo que ni se ha dado cuenta. Vamos a apagárselo. Okay. I thought she was asking me something. So, I have time this afternoon. Let me cover for him. Okay? I'm going to send you the audio to the WhatsApp group. I'm going to do it here. Where's Mario? He is late for his shift. Mario? Goodness, I got a call that he's very sick. I should have told you earlier. Don't worry. He should have called me directly. If he had called to my phone, 
I could have found a substitute by now. I have time this afternoon. Let me cover for him. Okay, there you have it. And you have the screenshot. You're going to practice this conversation and then we're gonna come back here. Do you understand the activity we are doing in this moment? Yes, miss. Perfect. Okay, let's see. Okay. Let's go.
ni se escuchaba bien despacito la grabación y no sé por qué really? yes, todo, será mi compu le digo, Pero, no, no se oía, oía muy bien mi... let me listen uh -huh. O sea, no se escucha despacito, se escucha suave. Ajá, se escuchaba poco. Uh -huh. Ok, ok, suave. Ok, yeah, baby, it's because I, I am loading my phone, like, I'm charging, I'm charging my phone. Estoy cargando mi teléfono, I'm charging my phone. And I did it from the computer. Maybe the computer audio is not really good for WhatsApp, so I'm sorry. But did you practice? Yes, miss. Okay. Yes, miss. I'm going to choose some participants to help me with that. Let me see. Ouch, 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 ouch. Give me a moment. Ouch. Ouch. Wait a moment. What was that? My goodness. Marco Julio, de ver si. Good. No. No, no, my God. <laughs> I live in, in, in a rural area, but I don't live in the jungle. Yeah. yeah. Miss, what do you, what's, what do you say? Sancudo? <laughs> mosquito. Mosquito. Yeah, yeah. I don't believe. Yeah, no it's problem. mosquito. No chain. No, por el otro mejor. Because mosquitos in Spanish are those little ones, right? But in English, zancudo is mosquito. And when you get a picada, the zancudo, you say a mosquito bite. Like morder, mosquito bite. <laughs> Pero si es picada. <laughs> yeah, mosquito bite. That's how they say it, mosquito bite. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but it's, it's, it's weird. Remember, Spanish and English, two different yeah. languages, right? Two different languages. Nada que ver. No busquemos lógica entre los dos porque a veces... A little hay... bit fly. What is it? A little bit fly. A little bit fly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's go here. And I'm going to choose two participants to help me with this. First, I'm going to choose Blanca and Jose Alfredo. Bl Jose Alfredo, you start. Where's Mario? He is late for his shift. Mario, goodness. I got a call that he is very sick. I should have told you er earlier. Don't worry. He should have called me directly. If he had called it to my, my phone. I could have phoned a substitute by now. I have time this afternoon. Let me call them for two weeks. Excellent. Good job. Let's give them an applause. Thank you, Blanca. Thank you, Jose. Good job. <coughs> Let's just repeat. Shift. Shift. Read. Shift. As como si como está escrito se le dice. Shift. 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 Cold. Okay. Cold. No call yet. Ni call it. Cold. Cold. Wow. 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 Okay. Cold. Now let's see. Jenny's. Mm, Eric Giovanni. Eric Giovanni, you start. <coughs> okay. Where's Mario? He's late for this his his shift. Mario. Mario goodness. I got a call that. He is very sick. I sure have told to Ellie. Don't worry. He shouldn't. He shouldn't have called me directly. If he had called it to my phone, I couldn't have found a substitute by now. I have found this afternoon. Let me cover for him. Okay, excellent. Give them an applause. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Jenny's. Good job. Thank you very much. Just directly, directly, cold and cooled. Cold, 
cold. Okay, it's very important we identify those two. Okay. Henry and Maria Julia. Okay. Henry, you start. Okay. Where's Mario? He is late for his shift. Mario? Goodness. I got a call that is very sick. I should have told you earlier. Don't worry. He should have called me directly. If he had called to my phone, I could have found a substitute by now. I have time in this afternoon. Let's recover for him. Excellent. Good job. Good job. Thank you, Blank. I mean, thank you, Maria Julia. And thank Maria. you so much. Henry, right? Henry and Maria Julia. Thank you very much. Appreciate yes. it. Good job. Now, if you could see in that conversation, we have these parts right here. And this is to express regret or to express a possibility in the past. Okay. So, for example, if in English I want to say, Ah, te hubiera llamado, pero se me olvidó. Right? Te hubiera llamado, pero se me olvidó. So in that case, hubiera, so I'm going to say, I should have called you. Because remember, we use the present perfect for experiences. But in this case, we're not talking about an experience that actually happened. Estamos hablando de una experiencia que en realidad pasó, ¿verdad que no? We're not talking about experiences that actually happened. We're talking about an experiences that should have happened, but it didn't. Que debería haber pasado, pero no pasó. So, you need to identify. Que poquitas cámaras encendidas. Oh, my God. Only four cameras. Three cameras. Huh? Look at that. Okay. Well, anyways, as I was saying before. These experiences, for example, if it was an obligation, yo hubiera hecho eso, pero no lo hice, es sería una suggestion, right? I should have done it, but I didn't. Hubiera hecho, pero no lo hice. Okay. Debería haber llegado más temprano. ¿Cómo creen que dice? Porque debería is an obligation. How do we say that in, in, in the present perfect? Debería haber llegado más temprano. Cool. Good. I could. You, you sure? I could get. Could is, could, could is an advice. I can. Okay. Podría. No es debería. I might. Must. Must. I must have come earlier, right? Must. Must. Okay. So now, we're going to talk about this and we're going to look at it right here we have a brief explanation in this part okay let's look at it it says use models perfect models to express regret or remorse what do you think is the meaning of remorse what do you think is the meaning of remorse Remordimiento. So to express regret, tiene un audio ahí abierto, no sé quién es. Ramiro. Ramiro. ¿Está dormido? Ramiro estaba roncando. No, disculpe, es que estoy dando la vuelta a la página. <risa> Ay, Ramiro, me asustó, se lo prometí. No quería despertarlo, la mía. Sí, de no quería despertarlo, de verdad. Estaba despertando, no, mentira, Ramiro, despertando. Estaba ¿verdad? soñando en inglés. No quería despertarlo, no. me asusté y rapidito le apagué el audio, disculpe. No, disculpe, es que no tengo la cámara encendida. Yes, I know, because of your internet, right? Ok, bueno. Thank you, Miss. You're welcome. Por despertarme. Me asusté, I, I got scared. Okay, use perfect models to express regress, regret or remorse, remorse about past actions. So things that happen already, okay? So these are things that happen already, 
but we couldn't do something about it. So we express regret. And in the first one we have, you should have plus past participle to talk about regrets, something that I regret that I didn't do. For example, I should have sent the, the report sooner. Debería haber enviado el reporte antes. Right? I shouldn't have asked her to carry those boxes. No le hubiera pedido que cargara esas cajas. So, we're talking about the past. Experience in the past, but something that didn't happen. So, I'm talking about a regret, something that I regret that didn't happen. I'm going to use should have, plus the verb in the past participle. Then, it says could and would have are often used with if had past participle. So possibilities son utilizadas could, could and would, y con el if. What is the meaning of if? If, if. Conditional. Yes, correct. It's a condition, right? So if had past participle. If I had known you were sick, I could have gotten a substitute. So it says, um, para oraciones como estas that we need a sub, uh, what is it? An independent clause, a dependent clause, we can do this. So this is an independent clause and this one here is a dependent clause. So this is the condition. If I knew this condition, I could have done this. If I had known you were sick, si yo hubiera sabido que estabas enfermo, I could have gotten a substitute. If I had known you were sick, I could have gotten a substitute. Then, the manager could have fixed your schedule if you had mentioned it to him. Next, I would have come to work if I had received the schedule on time. Now, let's answer these ones right here. Complete the sentences with should, could, or would have plus the past participle. Let's pay attention to it because it depends on the context what we're going to use. For example, here we have if. So it says that with if we use could or would, not should, could or would. If the server had received proper training, they could have answered the customer's questions, right? Let's go with number two here. The bartender, or oh, it should not right? The bartender should, and then, look at the rule, should, and then, um, have, have, shouldn't, I'm sorry, the bartender shouldn't have, take, take. What is the past party full of take? Took. Took. Take. Took in? Took. No. Okay. What is it? Taken. 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 The bartender shouldn't have taken the bottle of wine without permission. So we're going to do one, two, three, four, five activities, five sentences, and then we're going to come back. Okay? If you can take a screenshot, take a screenshot. Shouldn't take him be trouble. Okay, let's go. <clears throat>
porque no, cuando, no, no, es, no, no. Cuando, cuando es cuando yes, es cuando es yes, not Hey, hey, en el number two nos falta el auxiliary verb. Look, I, in, in all the, all of them. So, I would have. Oh, 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 my God. I would have been, I would have been. Remember, been. modal verb have and the verb in the past participle. So, what are you missing in the number two? Shouldn't. Okay taken shouldn't taken what is the me the, the the what is the mistake there shouldn't taken number two number two oh. shouldn't taken what is the mistake there taken. what are we missing ¿Qué nos falta? what are we missing Please. miren arriba modal que nos falta could have answered ¿Qué hay arriba que no hay en el de abajo? En el, en el de ejemplo. Could have answered. Couldn't have. 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 Couldn't have. Yes. Should take. Shouldn't have taken. taken. Have taken. Uh -huh. Shouldn't have taken, yes. And in the number two, but number three, number three, delete the letter I. I don't know why you put an I there. Delete the letter I. Eliminemos I. Yeah, delete the letter I. And Por then we would have, we are missing the verb B. Where do you have the verb B? We are missing we the have verb been. Been, correct. Would have been. 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 Would have, have, no, no, no. Have, have, have. 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 Would have been. The verb to be in the past participle, been. No, no, no. Double E and then N. Been. Double E. Double E. E, 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 E. That is I. E, E, E. Double E. Double E. Double E. No, perdón. Yes. Yeah. N. You have been. N. 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 Vi esa abeja. Para la N. Okay. En la, en la, en la caja registradora es. Register. 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 Yes. Esta palabra es. Without. Without. Yes. Sin. Sin permiso. Okay. Thank you, Miss. Platica mucho, pónganle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perico. Platica mucho en español. Okay, keep on going because your classmates haven't finished. Okay. Okay, gracias. Can should not take. I put it. The bartender shouldn't have taken that the bottle of wine without permission. The server will have been in trouble if they have been late for the meeting. You should have asked ask the manager for a day off. The cashier shouldn't have taken that money from the register. I shouldn't have called to let manager I was sick. That's better. The happy face. You want a happy face? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Miss. There you go. If the server, if the server okay. have received property training, that could have answered the custom.
Hello. So, I think Hello. we had a little bit of trouble understanding the topic, but at the end we got it. I will believe so. But tomorrow we are going to keep on practicing, okay? Right now I'm just going to go with the last attendance because at the beginning we had a little, like a few students, very, very, very few students. Ana Veronica Hernandez Rodriguez. Okay. Blanca Isabel Tunaca de Rodriguez. Present. Carlos Alberto Melendez Rosales. Present. Lelia Estela Flores Hernandez. Eric Enrique Reyes Martinez. Eric Giovanni Jiménez Canizales. Present, Miss. Eric José Reyes Molina. Present, Miss. Eric, bien calladito, ¿verdad? Hasta el final lo oigo. <ríe> Henry Adonai Torres Gómez. ¿No? Jacobo de Jesús Gómez Gómez. Present. Yanis Carolina Vázquez de Medrano. Jenis Carolina Vázquez de Medrano. Present. Jenis. Jenis was here, dice. Joy Alexander Escobar Calderón. Present, Miss. Jonathan José Oliver. Me da cuenta, Miss, el cansancio. Me da cuenta, mire, ese estaba durmiendo Jenis también. No, se quedó trabada la cámara. Ah. Uh, José Alfredo Hueso López. Present, Miss. Jocelyn Angelina Ramírez, de Mel Ramírez Melgar, siempre digo. <risa> Yenis, le escucha a le escucha a eh, Julio César Aguillón Arevalo. Bien, Julia Ramos Present, Miss. Miren, Patricia Artiga Vázquez. Sí, sí, están platicando los chuchitos de María Julia y Verónica. <risa> Sí, los, los dos están practicando. Mayra ah. Patricia Artiga Vázquez. Hacen más ruido que en los breakers. Yeah. Oscar René Molina Calidonio. Andreas Figueroa Cisneros. Present. Rafael Antonio Hernández Castillo. Present. Yes. Rafael Antonio Martínez Navarrete. Present, Miss. Ramiro Rafael Aguilar Díaz. Present, Miss. Sandra Yanira Gómez Romero. Silvia Patricia Aceituno Méndez. Verónica Elizabeth Burgos Rivas. Present, Miss. Y Happy Teacher's Day. Thank you very much. Appreciated. <laughs> Amado Javier Urrutia Rivera. Jacqueline Lizeth García Miranda. Okay, bueno, y nos tocó trabajar Teacher's Day, but thank you very much for being here. Gracias por estar acá, okay? Thank you very thank much. You thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a good night. Good night, classmate. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye. See you. Tomorrow. Bye. 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 See you.